Hello and welcome! Today I'm making a tier list of Tier Maker tool, which I highly recommend if you want to share some nice tiers that you make with communities that you belong to. And today I decided to go for my favorite race, one of the three. Let's call it main race, and it's dwarves. And dwarves got nice updates, so these guys are just now amazing yeah they're really amazing and i cut it into category of melee infantry missile infantry war machines and artillery which probably gonna be together war machines and artillery because why not so let's start with melee infantry and miners are crap miners are tier zero you don't that means you don't need military building to build them up but if you compare them to like tier zero of corn, it's terrible. Because tier zero of corn is for some reason warriors of chaos of corn instead of marauders of corn. Which should be changed and I, I think they will change it and address it in the DLC. But for the time being... Even if you compare to Marauders, they're still crap. They are armor piercing unit for, you know, early campaign especially. That you really don't need. So I think miners are just a filler. If you're desperate for a meat on a on a on a battlefield, like an, you know, just bodies. And their attribute good against gates is worthless. So I would recruit them only if I really, really needed anything. So they're emergency unit and I think they're crap. Next are the miners with blasting charges and when you compare them directly to the miners, they're exactly the same stats. It's nothing, it's nothing between them that separate them. The only difference is obviously the blasting charges. And the blasting charges are amazing. It's massive explosive armor piercing damage. And I love it. It's, it's really, really good. Wait, is it armor piercing? Yeah, it is some ex piercing explosive damage. So it's not amazingly, but you know, you can... If you blob up 2-3 units on top of each other and you throw the blasting charges are amazing. They are doing so much damage, it's insane. However, they can do also a lot of friendly fire and they are not always reliable. But my biggest problem with this unit is that vanilla unit has only one charge. That's why they could be better. If you add at least a second or third charge, they would be way higher. But because it's only one charge, I know there is a lord that can buff them like, I think it's a Grumbrindle, uh, that buffs the blast miners with blasting chargers, or Torgrim. No, Torgrim buffs hammers. So yeah, one of these two can buff miners with blasting charges. But as they are vanilla, they could be better, because... They're still, you know, really weak unit. But the blasting charges are doing the work sometimes. Dwarf warriors with shield are okay. These are your first and for a long time might be the main source of shielded units. They're gonna protect your missile infantry and artillery from, you know, units. They're good. They're just good. There is nothing wrong about them. They are good. Dwarf warriors with uh, great weapons. They're crap. Oh no, why? They could be better. I mean, they could be better, but I, I tested them out. And I never see a reason to choosing between these two. Of course, if you need armor piercing... Melee infantry, it's it's fine, right? But I 
I don't do PvP and I play campaign. So when I play campaign, I play on my own. Like I said, it's pretty much my list, my playstyle, and for campaign. So this is Snake's list and he thinks these are crap. I tested them, them out. I tried multiple times to use them. One-on-one -on -one unit they can lose to a lot of units because they're weak. Their stats. They're having 30 melee defense, 24 melee attack. I get it that uh, two-handed weapons are more vulnerable to melee attack. But if but if you give them two-handed axes, they should dish out, they should have more melee attack. Because look at this. Dwarf Warriors have 22 and 40 melee defense. These are 24 to 30. Weapon strength is 32. While these guys have 28. So yeah, they are not very good armor piercing, but they still do some armor piercing. These are very good armor piercing, but you know, but if you don't need armor piercing, these guys gonna lose. So the attack, weapon strength and attack difference between them, it's, it's so minor and you lose a lot of melee defense. So I highly highly recommend not using them because in the long run they're not gonna perform next up are the dwarf uh, longbeards with shields they're straight up improved version of dwarf warriors very good you should go for them nothing bad about them i can say they're okay uh longbeards with two-hander act two-handed axes when you compare long beards with two handed axes to these guys, they're also not the greatest in combat, but they have better stats in overall, higher melee defense, higher melee attack, but also have charge defense versus large and immunity for psychology but these guys will stand and fight just longer overall and i know it's just higher tier right but now i feel like uh i feel like these are just it's still they still could be better but they're better they they're way better than these units two-handed axes so uh the great weapons of Dwarf Warriors are just, just straight up bad. Next up are Slayers. And Slayers, regular Slayers and Giant Slayers are okay. I like to have sometimes Slayer, uh, for instance, versus Vampire Counts. When they send like flying units and you just, you know welcome them with slayers they're performing very well but they're slayers they're naked so they die often you need to replace them it's it's a bummer i'm not a slayer player but i i really like them but uh they're not that impressive however of course if you have a buffs for them from heroes lords they will do way way better but i'm talking about vanilla they're okay and Slayers, uh, Doomseekers, okay, I think they could be better. They're anti-infantry, that's nice. But there's 32 entities compared to 60, wait, Slayers have 80, Doomseekers are only 32. They're having magic attack, and I like it. But 32 entities is just not enough to fight other infantry units. Just any other infantry will always have 60 plus units. So they are not going to outlast most of the melee infantry. Magic attack, high melee attack, it's great. 
but they're still slayers, so they're naked, and it's not enough in, uh, entities to back it up. So I think they could be better. And now you can say, oh my god, but they have very nice ability. Yes, the ability is very nice, but you know what's the problem with ability? You don't start with it. You don't start battle with it. You need to charge it. And I've seen multiple, uh, you know, multiple situations where I lost the unit and the ability still wasn't charged. So if you, if you start with the, uh, with the ability immediately, so you can use it with like full unit when they, they clash with other infantry. Well, that's, that's already better, but because it doesn't work like that, it's annoying and I think they could be better. Hammerers. Hammerers are okay. And yeah, you could say Torgrim buffing them. Yeah. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. They're having magic attack. They're still two handed weapons. So they will perform a little bit worse than, than shielded variant. But hammerers in general are fine. High armor piercing. High eye armor piercing. Remember that. And uh, melee attack is great. But that's all about them. As vanilla as they are, there is nothing that can say, oh, they're very good. No, they're just okay. And I like them. With Torgrim, they're very good. But it's it's not it yet. Iron Breakers, amazing. Iron Breakers are the pinnacle of melee unit with shield. They're so much better than any other unit. They're just, you know, they're the go-to unit. If you're looking for something that is almost unbreakable. Unbreakable, uh, the Iron Breakers are just, they're not unbreakable, but they act like they are, because they have so much, you know, they're so tough, it's insane to kill them. I love them. They're, they're amazing. They're always, when I go for like uh, standard army composition with artillery, missile, missile infantry, they need to stand in front all the time. And now I have the melee infantry, Grot Silver. Now let's go and compare the long beards with great weapons versus long beards with great weapons, but the Grot Silver. Difference with stats is non existent. The, the, the only real difference is Guardian. And a lot of people does not value Guardian at all. I value it. Because it buff your heroes and your lord, and if you fight between them, oh, you don't even have to fight it. They they can be nearby and buff. It's 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 okay. It's actually it's very good. Ability is very good, but the unit is still. Mm. So I put them on an okay list. But they're they're nice. They're they're nice, really nice. So. The the guardian is. I always value guardian unit more than than uh, other stats because it buffs my hero lords which often are the you know carriers of a battle because it's all depends on their fate and how battle gonna go uh grudge cell slayers have something really like uh they have two differences one is sunder armor so it's very good but also Normal Slayers have a Death Blow, which is increased base weapon damage and armor piercing damage 20%. So when they're about to die 20% or less, their stats goes up for Normal Slayers. But the Grudge Settler have an extremely daring Death Blow, which when they're below 25%, which is already higher, they get higher melee attack, melee def resistance, physical resistance 15%. And base weapon damage and base uh, and armor piercing damage plus 50%. This is insane. This is so fucking powerful. 
out of nowhere, your slayers are just hard to kill. And I think they're very good. You can't unfortunately have a full stack of them. But you can have a couple of them. And they will they will perform amazing. They are very, very, very good. And hammerers, uh, grot sellers, I think also are very good. So, normal hammerers are just fine, right? But the uh, hammerers, grudge sellers have frenzy, which is very good for you know melee infantry unit, but also have frostbite, minus thirty percent. All uh, rest is the same, but worst problem, dwarf problem is pretty much their speed. So if you have a unit that can hit something fast when they charge in or something and you slow them down it's harder for them to run away so they will perform just way better than regular hammerers so I think they're they're very very good range missile infantry it's it's a lot fun with the wars so first off are the quarrelers and I think quarrelers are very good. They're borderline amazing because it's unit that can you can use you can use for entirety of campaign. They're very good to shoot a, you know uh, across the walls, so you can hit things a lot. They are god tier in Torek Ironbrow campaign, where you can buff them to some insane level. And they are just gonna delete stuff. They are borderline amazing because they're gonna serve you well. I I I think I'm gonna put them here because they are so universal, and they they can dish out a lot of enemy, a, a lot of damage for you know, for a crossbow, they're really doing its job perfectly. And because they have shields, it's way harder to kill them. Add racial, you know, spell resistance. It's it's really hard to like purge them off the battlefield. So they are really they're very good, and you can recruit them no matter when. Of course, it's not a gunpowder. That's the only minus. But they're so universal. They beat up gunpowder because they don't need line of sight. Uh, Corollars with. <laughs> Two-handed weapons could be better. They could be quarrelers without two-handed weapons. Yeah, they are just... Uh, yeah, they're pretty much... They can shoot everything. It's it's okay, right? But the two-handed variant, no shield. Oh, it's, it's, it's just so much... So much worse. I still think they should be... Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm torn between these two. I'm torn between these two. But two-handed great weapons uh, quarrelers are are just no. no. Thunderers are very good, but you put it these I'm amazing. Yeah, thunderers are very good, but I had so many occasions. And remember, I played wars a lot, and line of sight is such a bullshit sometimes. Like the terrain. They're amazing. They're they're god tier on a flat terrain, okay? Or when they shoot from above, something where they have you know no problem with line of sight. But often the terrain is is garbage. It's it's different. So putting them and have effective gunpowder gunpowder damage, it's it's way harder than quarrelers because quarrelers can shoot up and and you know. And still do a lot of damage while these guys really you need to fix the line of sight. So I don't think ever gunpowder unit gonna be in a, the you know the, the final tier because of the line of sight and terrains that you often struggle with. But that's my opinion. Remember, you don't have to agree. Okay, uh slayers with pistols. I, I really don't know what I how to value them, cause let me look. 
Uh, I did use them a little bit and I was not impressed because they have only six shots. And except that, 80 slayers, they just don't have. Wait, they have death blow, but they don't have anti large. Yeah, they don't have anti large addition. So they are slayers without anti large, but with pistols. And the pistol. Yeah, a little bit uh, armor piercing, so it's not the great. Okay, I guess they're just okay. They're just okay. Because you can use the, you know, pistol fi uh, fire and just go for for other stuff. Uh, Thunderers, Grudge Rakers, pretty much the uh, shotgun version. Blunderbusses version of Dwarves. And I think they're very good. Now when they fix them, these guys can, you know, do a lot of them. Jesus, blunderbusses and anything like them. Every, every the only problem is always the range. But uh, grudge rakers. They also have shield, so they are already very good. Missile strength is is not bad, right? A lot of shots, uh, shots per volley, number of projectiles. But there is like <laughs> a lot of projectiles. It's just it's so much damage. In melee, they are nothing amazing again. So obviously, it's purely range unit. But I don't think I I think you you're not gonna uh, put them into melee. But then again. The range. I think I'm good. I'll put them okay, because they're not exactly as blunderbusses. Okay, I, 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 maybe I overvalue them a little bit because I, I always look on blunderbusses, and what they do. But these are wanna be blunderbuss, but not so much. So they are a little bit behind uh, with damage, but still very good. So, uh, the damage, but other stats, they're okay. They're okay. It's fine to use them. Rangers, uh, Rangers, Rangers. So Rangers, when you give them to Belagor, they're amazing, obviously. But in other cases, they're like Quarrelers. They're like Quarrelers, okay? Uh, they also have Shield. And they have Stock. So they are, they can do a lot of crazy stuff. And I think they're very good. My only problem is they have, they're having less, less uh, ammunition. By six in a basic vanilla unit. That's a lot. That's a lot. So they are never gonna perform so much. They're never gonna do so much damage like the regular callers. They will be behind no matter what because the the um, the amount of uh, ammunitions they have is just too much difference. But stock gives them gives them a lot, and I really really like them. And Belagar, they're god god tier. And when it comes to great weapon variants, this is this this unit is a fucking joke. Okay, this unit is a fucking joke. Because they have only 12 shots. I mean, if you do great weapon variant, I mean, I, I, I honestly, I would put them on a crap list. Because I, I don't think I ever recruit these. Look. The Vanguard deployment and stock, this is very good, right? So this is something that pretty much takes them off the crap list. Because of all this. Uh... Armor piercing, very good, right? Every everything is fine, but uh, the, the ammunition is almost non-existing. So you pretty much rely on them, uh, rely them on going into melee, 
right? Because they are not gonna uh, shoot a lot. And if you compare these two, they're having worse stats than the Quirrellers. Great weapon. So stock is great, but everything above them, uh, ac 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 about them, is worse than even great weapons. So I think these units should never be recruited unless you want to have a stalker that can do some. No, it's just regular, <laughs> regular ones gonna do just way better. Don't hurt yourself. Not enough ammo. Stats are low. Only thing that really about them is good is stock. And Vanguard deployment. That's literally it. And yeah, armor piercing. But 12 shots with high armor piercing uh, versus 18 shots with lower. It's just, it's gonna do. No. No, I think they are. And you may disagree with me. I, I accept your point of view, but no. Bugman's Rangers. Oh my god. Bugman's Rangers are fucking amazing if you give them the proper buildings to... Jesus, they are so good. They have option to heal. Ammunition, 20. They also have stock. Immune to psychology. Charge defense versus large. Yeah, they, they, they are fucking amazing. And Belagar makes them insane, okay? So they are... They're just so good. Iron Drakes, very good. I am a huge, huge fan of Iron Drakes, and trust me, they are just so worth it to, to use, recruit both of them. They're so good of them, they're amazing, and it's, it's definitely worth to recruit them. Regular one will do so much damage. Uh, so much damage to infantry. They melt infantry. And a troll hammer torpedoes. Jesus, troll hammer torpedoes gonna obliterate the large unit. Uh, let me see. Yeah, troll hammer torpedoes have buff versus large 20. It's just insane. So they're both very good and I highly recommend recruiting them in, in multiple scenarios, whatever you please. Now, Grud Settler time. A Quarreler with great weapon. And you may say, oh my god, you're gonna put them low again, right? Look, this is the Quarreler great weapon. This is the Grudge Settler. Difference between them is one, the missile is having shield break. So if you go against somebody who's having high shield defense, you drop it by 24. Plus, they having bonus versus infantry in melee and in, in missiles. So Getting them, it's not that easy, of course. But if you have opportunity to recruit them, they're very good. They're, they're very good. It's, it's really nice to recruit them. And now, artillery and war machines. And first off is... Bolt Thrower. And Bolt Thrower, despite having updates, it's still crap. I I read your comments and there was like, oh, bolt thrower is amazing versus large or towers. Wow. But usually when large units move away, bolt throwers are missing. Eh, it's just no. I tested bolt throwers, especially with Torek Ironbrow. I buffed them as much as possible, and they were still underperform compared to any other artillery piece so no matter what you do any other variant is just beating the shit out of it sorry 
So Grudge Thrower is a very good unit. Period. It's a very good unit. Highly recommend doing it. It's a unit that you can recruit till the late ga stage of, uh, of a campaign. It's not very good against like monsters, but it, it does its, you know, it can still hurt them. It's not that terrible. Cannons, also very good. I think cannons, dwarfish cannons are performing very good. Uh, in Malachi campaign, you can make them a little bit more fun with grape shot. Uh, so in the short range, they will delete stuff. So it's it's nice. Cannons are doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, next up is flame cannon. And flame cannon. Now it it's. I dislike the way it shoots. It was it was different in Warhammer too. Now it it does. I I don't like it. Uh, you. It's it's quite easy to avoid their shots. Even AI is often missing, uh, avoiding my shots from, you know, flame cannons. And I think they're just okay. Especially that there's more and more units with fire resistance. Uh, yeah, it's it's just shorter range. It's just I would pick grudge thrower or cannon all day, every day, after, uh, above these guys. Oh my god, this unit is... Uh, it's... Goblin Hewer. <laughs> Goblin Hewer, I, I felt at the start it's a meme unit, okay? I felt it's like meme unit, but then I saw how much it damage it can perform, uh, power output, and it's insane. And if... And if it drops ammo completely, you can still send the crew to combat. It's a mix of a Slayer unit with artillery. So, when they get attacked by something, the crew will defend itself, no, no joke. And if they, something will try fly, especially large against them, well, they're gonna get shot. I think... Goblin Hewer is anti-large. Yeah, it's only plus 10 anti-large bonus. But still, it shoots so fast and it does so much damage. It's, it's just really good. It's really, really good. And yeah, if something dares to attack them, hmm. good luck. Organ guns, amazing. They delete stuff. They delete stuff. They do so much damage. It's insane. If you buff them, they're even more and more better. It's just so good. It's so satisfying to see how organ guns are shooting. They they can really mow down the infantry. Grudge seller, uh, grudge thrower. Amazing. Sharp shrapnel, uh, ammo. Yeah, it, it shows a little bit no range here, but the missile strength is 190. And the, sh you know, shrapnel, it splits on multiple like pieces. It's so good. It's amazing versus infantry, but it's also good against anything else. It's just amazing unit in general. Grudge Settler Cannon. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. It has, in fact, less missile strength, but it has double the ammo. So it could be great, right? But the fire arc is still... Eh. It's a little bit better, but it's, I would put them in the same category because they're so similar. Uh, I like the Grudge Cellar Cannon versus Walls, Towers. It does 150% multiplier. It's 
it's really effective to destroy like stuff. So this is very, very high bonus because the this unit will delete any kind of form of defense. So I like the Grudge Settler army that you get for completing the uh, cycle of Grudge. Age of Reckoning, right? Because you, you tend to have them like, like I have army now with two flame cannons and I'm taking, I'm going against uh, settlement. Yeah, immediately towers disappearing. Range is still, eh. So I, I don't like the range, but it's, it's general very, very nice. But, and you can, you can say, oh, you're biased or you saw what legend did and legend valued them equally. Yeah, he did, but I, I, when I was watching him, I was like, yep, I would do the same. And now I'm doing. Next up are the flying war machines and gyrocopters. Amazing. They got nerfed recently and I was saying, what's the way of nerfing? I was always uh, suggesting that the reasonable nerf for gyrocopters would be cutting the ammo. That's it. Don't change anything with them because they will again go back to you know pit of being meme and, and a joke unit while now they're really really good and balance out by recent nerfs uh, to ammo which you can still buff high with enough engineers but this unit you can build up stacks with it and have so much fun especially the quest battles because <laughs> If you have stocking lord and put the gyrocopters only up, they won't find a stocking lord and you can just freely do whatever you want. So gyrocopters are absolutely amazing. Which I cannot say about the brimstone gun. And brimstone gun is for me borderline these two. But I think I'm going to put it into could be better. And you may say, oh, you're insane, but I am. I think the brimstone gun are, okay, I tested it multiple times. It can do nice damage. You do need to put a lot of work in order to shoot like two units. And often I land to use the flamethrower just to not shoot from above because the angle is lower and you don't cover that much space with the fire like iron drakes does so it's it's yeah it's lacking a little bit of a more oomph but also the ammunition jesus the ammunition is such a weak point you will never ever have the same amount of damage compared to regular gyrocopters because the ammo goes you know runs out so fast it's it's annoying and if I want to use them I, I use them if I have them just because like I start campaigning with it or I confederate then I can use it but that's the only exception I will never recruit it if I have option to choose with the regular gyrocopters gyro bombers are okay gyro bombers are okay they were a crap because, I mean, they were never crap. I always thought they're okay. There's now, because there was one entity, now there's four. Uh, there is, I think, less bombs than they used to be. But they're okay. They're really okay. I wish they are better. Let me look. Yeah, so gyro bomber. The damage is nice. But the problem with damage is that often it, uh, if you shoot against... Like infantry, and often they choose one target and blow up all the clip on like one unit, one entity. So when entity dies, the shots goes into a ground. I hate it. It's annoying. If it's it's way better if you go for like um, a single entity monster. That's that's way better. Way 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 better. But it still feels. Hmm, it has a lot of ammo, it can defend itself in the air a little bit, because it it does damage. It doesn't have defense, but it will do some damage. And 
yeah, it's just almost almost better, but it's just okay. It could be better in multiple ways, but I feel it's it's okay. Uh, don't wanna don't wanna sit with it too much because it's not that good. And of course, thunder barge is fucking amazing. There is no doubt. Despite all the nerfs, thunder barge is still a king. And same goes to gyrocopter troll hammers. They're like regular gyrocopters, but have anti-large effect, which is so good. It's my our anti-large bonus versus large is fifty. I was expecting first time. Oh, it's gonna be 20, 25, 30, 50. This is this this is so good versus literally anything that is big. If if I have to shoot small anti the Lord hero with it, I'm feel like ah. Eh. But when I get anything large, oh my god, this is the go-to killer. This unit is amazing, and I highly recommend combining a couple of them. Even if, if you have a, you know, building an army with gyrocopters, get at least three, if you can, the Trollhammer torpedoes. Uh, so whenever something large comes, it will be eradicated in no time. And I think, uh, yeah, this is a nice addition. And that's it. That's it, my tier list for dwarves. Uh, I'm interested what do you think? How do you disagree with me on these units? Because you some probably will. But I think it's it's spread it evenly. I mean I was really harsh for some of the units, but they don't deserve to be higher due to having low stats or not having enough entities or like Doom Seekers the ability being not chargeable. I mean it it's not it's not that it's not chargeable, but you start without her. If you start without it, ah, oh, it's such a bummer. And and yeah, I think I was generous to some units, but and I I was I was trying to be fair all day every day. So this is my list. I'm interested. What do you think? Uh, if you disagree, I would like to hear your opinion. Why? And if you reach this moment, please consider subscribing. You're gonna help me a lot because I, I want to grow this channel. And also, if you're, if you have funny situation, army composition, some rough situation that you want to show to others, I will leave an email down below that you can send me cell file and I'll try to cover. But I hope you like it. Thank you for watching. This is it from me today. Uh, tell me in comments if you want to have more tier lists or you don't want to because you think this is pretty much uh, what Legend does. But, you know, Legend, everyone are doing tier lists eventually. I never did it, so maybe this is time for me. But also, I have my own uh, experience and I judge them by a little bit different criteria than Legend. So we have different opinions and evaluation of these units, which I check. And yep, some of them are mixed up in a few places. But that's it me for, from me today. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you can. Have a good day. Take care and bye bye.